Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm working on a photo that's dark. I don't know about you, but I do not nail exposure every time. Either I've shot a set of brackets and I'm working with one of the exposures, which is by definition not really perfectly exposed, or I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to grab a shot on the go or whatever. Anyway, I end up with some photos that are dark. I also tend to expose to the left. That's a whole other discussion. However, you have dark photos sometimes and you wanna fix them. How do you fix them? Well, there's three key tools in Luminar that I use to brighten up a dark photo. That's what we're covering today. Let's hit it. The first one is develop, by the way. This is not a raw file, this is a JPEG. Same tools apply, but that's why it says develop and not develop raw. So the first and most obvious one, of course, is this section called light, where you have the exposure slider, and of course, dragging the exposure to the right, quite obviously, it just brightens everything in the photo. That can be useful, but you gotta be careful simply because, as you can see, the highlight areas are getting pretty blown out. But of course, you're not gonna do that by itself, which is why uh, you have this highlight slider here. You can pull back some of that highlights, maybe add a little bit of contrast, and maybe lift a little bit of shadows. So you can quickly and easily make some adjustments that take a photo that looked like that, and you get a much more balanced exposure pretty quickly. So develop is the first tool, but we're not done in develop. There's a lot here to unpack, we're gonna keep going. So I'm just gonna hit reset, and while the light section is the first one I would look at, the second one I would look at is blacks and whites. Now the thing is, blacks and whites by themselves are not gonna have a huge impact on your photo, but they can help. So I would recommend that you use them in combination with anything that you do up here in the light section. But in this case, maybe you lift the whites a little bit. You just wanna be careful because those highlight areas over here in the sky on that right-hand side above the buildings, if you go too far, you can see that they're getting kind of blown out. But I can lift them a little bit and kind of get away with it. I can also lift blacks and that's gonna help but remember, keep this in mind, anytime you're brightening a photo, in other words, brightening the dark parts, um, you're gonna re remove contrast. You're basically creating a more evenly distributed uh, light. You're more evenly distributing the light across the photo. So just be careful because when you remove contrast, you end up getting a little flatter looking photo, which may not look the way you want it to look. So you can use whites and blacks, but I tend to use them in combination with these tools up here. Maybe you lift the shadows, maybe you pull the highlights down. You know, it, it would be a combination of various things here for me between those tools to get it looking right. And that's probably not perfect, but that's just an example. Again, that's whites and blacks in combination with light. Lots of powerful tools here in develop, but still we're not done because there is curves and this tone curve, which I've talked about in that video, super powerful, super amazing. And in fact, the curve tool itself with the tone curve here, as well as the RGB tabs, you've got amazing power over light and color. We're just talking about light here. You could come in with this slider and just drag the midtones to the left and you can kind of see what's happening. Lots of midtones in an image. They're just getting brighter. Again, like I said a moment ago, you're losing contrast because everything is getting brighter and um, that just reduces contrast. So maybe you wanna just be careful. Maybe you wanna pull that back a little bit and maybe you wanna drop some anchor points here and there so that you can get things brighter where you want them to be without kind of going too uh, bright in certain areas so as uh, not to remove too much contrast. Maybe that's a little bit better Every image is different. Take your time, experiment, and if you don't know how to use the tone curve, I definitely recommend practicing. Check out that video I mentioned a moment ago. But once again, dark photo, much brighter photo. And as I've said already with develop, I would use all three of these tools in combination. Some people may just live in curves. These are people that might be really advanced in their editing and kind of be an expert or just prefer curves because it does give you a lot of control. That's not really me. I tend to use it in combination with other things. But you know, by combining various tools, you might wanna impact some contrast, pull back these highlights a little bit, maybe lift a little bit of shadows. You know, I'm kind of making it up here to be honest. I don't have a particular plan. A little bit of whites and blacks, maybe a little bit more lift in the shadows. And you can see, I mean, I've got a pretty nicely balanced photo. There it is before, and there it is after using all these different tools in combination. So tool number one is develop with three different sections, in particular light, blacks and whites, and curves that I would use in combination to ensure I got the best results possible across the entire image. 
here's another idea, and that is if you wanna use certain parts of this in different parts of the photo, don't forget, you can mask it in. So you could use develop and then come back, use it again, mask it in differently. That would give you the ability to do things like dodge and burn, for example, if you wanna uh, selectively lighten or darken certain areas. So don't hesitate to try that as well. But having said that, I'm gonna hit reset. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that from the edits tab so that you know nothing else has been done to this photo. And I'm gonna to go to tool number two, which is Axon AI. Now, this is one you gotta be careful with on a dark photo. You can make a lot of progress really quickly like that, and I think that looks good. I don't recommend always going to 100 though, simply because it can have a huge impact on contrast and color and things like that, because Accent AI is not just for lighting. It does do contrast and color. So if you were to use it again and again, in that masking example where maybe use it like that and you say, okay, I commit. So if you look at edits tab, you've got one instance of Accent AI. If you go back over here and say, I wanna use it again, well, you're gonna really get an over the top kind of HDR looking photo if you're not careful. So you could come in and maybe reduce this a little bit and then come in and mask it and say, all right, well, I wanna increase the exposure, but just in the foreground using Accent AI a second time. So again, this is kind of like a dodge and burn kind of example. And you could come in and mask it in selectively in order to just get the photo a little bit brighter just in that area without having all that impact on the sky. Maybe you like the sky like that with the first Accent AI, but you don't wanna to touch it with the second instance, mask it in, and you can see there it is before and there it is after. So that's a second way that you can come in and use a tool to brighten a dark photo. So once again, I'm gonna go in here, I'm just gonna reset these and delete them so that you can see that that is completely clear. And uh, I'm back to normal or the original photo. And the third tool is Super Contrast. Now this one, again, is something that I would typically use in combination with the other ones. And that's really the theme of the video. Yes, you can get it done depending on the photo with each of these tools individually without using the other ones. But my personal preference is strike a balance, season to taste, however you wanna describe it, figure out the delicate dance in terms of how much of each of these filters you want to use and apply them accordingly as your image uh, you know, may require or as it suits your taste. So here, between highlights and midtones and shadows contrast, you can have a pretty decent impact on the photo. I think with uh, highlights contrast, with a dark photo, you probably don't need a lot of that, right? Because you don't wanna really add any darkness to the sky. Midtone contrast, I would come and experiment. I definitely brighten the sky there. And if I increase the amount of midtone contrast and drag the balance to the left, that sky, which has a lot of midtones in it, is getting a bit brighter. And then of course, shadows contrast is gonna come in handy here. In this case, I'm gonna go left. That's gonna uh, lighten the shadows, right? Left versus to the right, it's really dark. So I'm gonna go left, but you may wanna increase the amount and you can see I've got a nicely balanced photo now and all I've done is super contrast. There it is before and there it is now. Again, probably something I would use in combination with the other tools. And also, again, just to reemphasize this message, be careful about it really increasing the um, exposure in the shadow areas. In other words, um, be careful about overly brightening the shadows because in an example like this where I did that, it starts to look fairly flat because I think Photos look kind of flat if they're lacking contrast. This one is now kind of lacking contrast because I brightened it so much. But again, use them in combination with the other tools and I think you'll end up with beautifully balanced photos in terms of the light. Now I'm gonna remove that and there's one more tool which gets kind of an honorable mention that's Relight AI. And again, I've said this repeatedly, I'm gonna say it again, this is not one that I would necessarily use completely by itself. I would use it as a bit of an accent, I hate to use that word because of accent AI, but I would use it as a bit of an accent to some of the other moves. You can see here, and you already know how this works, but increase the uh, brightness, increase the depth, and then maybe increase some of the brightness far. And you can see, you get a pretty nice result out of it. So there it is before and there it is after. But again, I'm kind of losing some of the highlights here and I don't need to go in advanced settings where I have the warmth and the dehaloing. But again, use it in combination with other things like what's in the develop tab to control those highlights and you can quickly and easily take a dark photo and turn it into a much brighter one with more evenly distributed light. 
That's how I go about it in Luminar Neo. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Experiment, have fun, every photo is different, but these tools do a great job of helping you take a dark photo and make it brighter. And like I said, don't forget, because you can reuse tools, you can apply edit selectively with masks and then use it again and apply different selective edit in a different area based on a different mask. So lots of power, lots of flexibility. That's how I do it in Luminar Neo. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. I will see you soon. Until next time, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.